Beecher, Michigan is a census-designated place that borders the city of Flint to the north. I begin the video heading south on Saginaw Street in Mount Morris Charter Township, just north of Beecher. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Well, let's start here. There ain't no beach in Beecher, Michigan, unless you're talking about this retention pond off of 475, or maybe what appears to be this tiny reserved wetland area behind a Dollar General off of Saginaw Road. Plus, it's not even spelled that way. Come on, people. Beecher, Michigan is spelled with two E's, whereas a beach is spelled with an E-A. You should have spotted that one right out of the gate. You're better than that. But no. Beecher gets its name from an early Genesee County settler named Charles Beecher. Early on, Beecher became a notable figure in Genesee County after settling in the area in 1836. Beecher was a state representative, a township supervisor, a postmaster, a county commissioner, and a judge. First off, there's two signs here. One says Beecher, home of the Buccaneers. The other says, welcome to Beecher Business District, and to that, I say, what business district? Hey, that's not very nice. Eh, most of you will be saying the same thing as we continue. But yeah, I don't got time for feelings. Come on now. Well, moving on now. You could argue today that Beecher is like an extension of the north side of Flint. You could also argue that it's an extension of Mount Morris. Whichever you decide to classify it as, you can't ignore the fact that Beecher has fallen on hard times. A drive down Saginaw Street, or through Beecher's Business District, will show you exactly what I'm talking about. As a majority of the businesses have left Beecher, and there's no sign of them coming back anytime soon, unfortunately so. To the right is not the high school, but you have some facilities that are a part of Beecher Community Schools. So, even though Beecher is not its own city, it's a census-designated place, there's still a Beecher School District. So, here you have the auditorium, the basketball gym, and the football and baseball fields. We'll see the actual high school later in the video. Beecher, along with the neighboring Mount Morris Township, are both showing signs of severe economic decline, and in parts of both burbs, it's difficult to differentiate the municipalities from what you see throughout most of Flint, which is urban decay in the forms of not only abandoned retail buildings, but also abandoned homes and vacant lots where a business or home once stood. Simply put, Beecher has gone how Flint has gone, and it will likely go where Flint goes in the future. When GM employed 80,000 workers in the city of Flint alone during the 1960s and 70s, Beecher was doing just fine. When the layoffs came and people in the area started to lose their jobs, Beecher started to decline rapidly just as Flint did. Thank you. 
Here you can see the population history of Beecher for as long as the U.S. Census has kept track of Beecher's population. In contrast, the city of Flint saw its population peak during the 1960 census at 196,000, and the city has lost population at an extremely high rate ever since, as it's now down to 80,000. Genesee County, on the other hand, didn't really start to see consistent population decline until 1990, as it peaked at 450,000 in 1980. For the county, the sharpest decline percentage-wise came between 2010 and 2020, which makes sense as the Flint water crisis hit during that time frame. So anyway, you can see with those numbers that Beecher has gone how Flint has gone, and it will likely continue to be that way. Speaking of the water crisis, unfortunately so, there were some addresses that were affected by the lead poisoning that lived outside of Flint city limits. This list has 266 addresses to be exact, so not that many of them, but there are some. And most of these places were along streets right outside of Flint's boundaries. The city of Burton seems to have the majority of these addresses. However, in Beecher, there were a handful of addresses along the north side of Carpenter Road that were hooked up to Flint's water system at the time of the water crisis in 2014. And to give that some more context, Carpenter Road serves as the borderline between Flint and Beecher. Anyway, all other Beecher addresses were hooked up to Beecher's municipal water supply. You know, Beecher, just like with Flint, was a blue-collar community during its heyday, so once the majority of the manufacturing jobs left, so did the people. And over time, the Flint metro area has become a largely segregated area. You have the wealthier suburbs spread out to the far west, the south, and the far east, whereas the suburbs to the north, along with parts of Burton, have seen economic decline, with Beecher being the most extreme example. But head on over to Flushing, Davison, Grand Blanc, or even Fenton to the far southwest in Genesee County, and it's a night and day difference from what you see here and throughout most parts of Flint. And to see videos on the nice suburbs or the nice places in the Flint area, make sure to check out my Flint playlist where I have all of the videos uploaded that I've made on the area. When it comes to the economic stats for Beecher, 8,800 people live here as of the 2020 census, and that number has likely declined since then. Some estimates show that only 8,100 people live here as of 2022. Anyway, the median household income is an extremely low $33,000 per year, and only 5% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $33,700, while the poverty rate is 32%, meaning that one out of every three people in Beecher lives in poverty. When it comes to the crime rates, Beecher sees twice the national average, whereas the property crime rate is right around average. In years past, Beecher has seen extremely high violent crime rates along the same lines as Flint. In recent years, however, both Flint and Beecher have seen their crime rates drop, although they're still too high for comfort. So, Hopefully those crime numbers can continue to go down, as that would be a step in the right direction for once. Meanwhile, this residential neighborhood seems to have more empty lots than occupied lots. And, you know, I can't help but wonder if... Beecher is going to be annexed by Flint maybe in the near future because the population here continues to decline as I mentioned briefly earlier. Some estimates show that the population of Beecher is now down to 8100 and the school district has shrunk. You'll see some closed schools throughout this video. You know, you just wonder what's going to happen to the jurisdiction of this place as it continues to shrink in population because when that happens, then usually changes are made. But technically, since Beecher is partially a part of Mount Morris Charter Township and partially a part of Genesee Charter Township, maybe the parts of Beecher that are within both townships will just go back to the townships. Who knows? Or maybe Beecher will stay the same.
Now, one thing that a lot of people think about whenever Beecher gets mentioned is the 1953 Beecher tornado, June 8th, 1953 to be exact. On that day, an F5 tornado, which is the strongest measurement of a tornado, ripped right through Beecher along an 18 and a half mile path. The twister caused 116 deaths along with 844 injuries. The Beecher tornado by far and away is the worst natural disaster to hit in the state of Michigan, which is a state that sees fewer natural disasters than pretty much every other state. However, when disaster does strike in Michigan, it usually comes in the form of a tornado, and in 1953, an F5 tornado just happened to touch ground in a populated area. There were seven other tornadoes to hit in Michigan on that day, and altogether there were 125 deaths and 925 injuries across the Great Lakes state. However, here are some more facts about the Beecher tornado. There hasn't been a single F5 tornado in the U.S. to cause over 100 fatalities since the one that hit Beecher back in 1953. As of February 2023, the Beecher tornado continues to be the only recorded F5 tornado to touch ground in southeast Michigan. Wind speeds inside the twister ranged from 261 to 318 miles per hour. The twister was 800 yards wide and it traveled east at 27 miles per hour. And for those reasons, the Beecher tornado of 1953 is often brought up in conversation not just with locals, but also with meteorologists nationwide, because it was that significant of an event. Briefly, I'm going to speed up the footage because there's really not much to see where we are currently. Anyway, according to a drawing that I found from the National Weather Service, the Beecher Tornado was reported to have touched ground just southeast of the intersection of Coldwater and Webster Roads, three miles west of Beecher. The twister pretty much followed Coldwater Road east through all of Beecher before heading in a northeast direction east of town. Speaking of Coldwater Road, we are now heading west on it, and soon we'll be at Beecher High School. Earlier, we passed by along Saginaw Road, and now we're passing by it once again, as to the right is the auditorium, the basketball gym, the football field, and the baseball field that is used by Beecher High School. But the academics are held elsewhere, and we're heading there next.
You know, I'm actually thinking about how much better it would look if there was snow on the ground. I mean, it's Michigan. Yeah, that's better. Well, this is Beecher High School, home of the Buccaneers, and it looks like someone was doing some off-roading. Beecher High School is rated as a D-plus on Niche.com, so that's not very good. However, among the most notable alumni includes former NFL linebacker Carl Banks, who played for the New York Giants, the team in Washington, and the Cleveland Browns. Former NFL wide receiver Courtney Hawkins, who played for no one other than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lastly, current NBA player Monte Morris, who started his career playing for the Denver Nuggets, but now plays for the Washington Wizards, is an alumni of Beecher High School. Hey yo, Monte Morris, did you happen to live in Mount Morris? Nope. No? No? You lived in Flint? Oh, okay. Just, just thought I'd ask. Meanwhile, an ABC 12 article from fall of 2022 says that spectators were restricted at both Flint Southwestern and Beecher football games due to fights breaking out in the stands. Come on, people. Show some class. And show them darn kids the right way to act. Come on now. Oh, and on the night of Monday, February 6th, there's a gale warning in place for Genesee County until 4 p.m. on Tuesday... February 7th. Well, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I think that's enough snow for me. Let's let's uh, go back to having no snow, eh?
And tucked away deep into this neighborhood, away from the main roads, is Cranbrook Village, a decently sized apartment complex. Well, if you want to see more of what Beecher, Michigan looks like, I continued my drive around town for the next 10 minutes or so. There's a couple of main thoroughfares that I drive on, and there's several more side streets that I venture along throughout the rest of this video. It's really just a continuation of what we have seen already. Regardless, Beecher absolutely looks like a community that has lost over half of its peak population. And it shouldn't be a surprise, because Beecher has lost over half of its peak population. You know, this tends to be what places look like when they lose half of their residents over a long period of time. It's not a coincidence. Also, it's worth mentioning that this is the last video that I'll upload on the Flint area that goes through a depressed area such as Beecher. The rest of the videos that I have to upload on this region are actually of pretty good areas. So stay tuned to see what those areas look like as well. Today, this is an empty field, but there was a school here not too long ago. Well, actually, pretty long ago, because this street view shot from Google is from 2008, and there is no high resolution shot, as the next one of this street was in 2011, and the building was destroyed by then.
And there's another school that is closed here. This used to be Tucker Middle School. So you can see that school closings have hit Beecher just as hard as they've hit Flint. But Beecher at least has a high school left in town. And no, Southwestern Flint is not a high school, it's an academy. But there is only one elementary school, one middle school, and one high school left in Beecher.
In this video, you saw the census-designated place that is Beecher, Michigan. It borders Flint, and it also borders Mount Morris Township and Genesee Township in Genesee County, Michigan. With that said, I do end the video here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Flint playlist, my American Hoods playlist, or in my Michigan playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.